welcome back to the th second clip and we were looking at uh, this formula yeah, to compute the expected return and I was explaining the convention yeah? how do you compute the probability like here must be stated in decimal not must but uh, it is uh, mostly yeah, stated in decimal yeah? it, rather than stating 30% you state that as 0 0.3 but the return, yeah, you should state this in percentage. Yeah? It's given decimal here, it should be in percentage. Then you just uh, use percentage here. Yeah? All the returns must be in percentage. Therefore, the return here will also be in percentage. Yeah? All right, let's look at the formula in uh, greater detail. Yeah? Okay, yeah, this is the formula here. I prefer using this formula rather than the formula given in the textbook. Yeah? Now, this is called a hat. Yeah? This R stands for return, so the R with the hat is called the expected return. Okay, of course, this is the summation sign. I stands for possibility or scenario or state. Yeah? So this uh, has N states. Yeah? I from uh, 1 to N. Yeah? Now P stands for probability of the possibility of I. Okay? multiplied by the possible return. It is called the possible return given condition I or given state I. Yeah? All right, for the first uh, stock, yeah, there are three possibilities yeah? and N is equals to 3. Therefore, P1 multiplied by R, P1 multiplied by R1 plus, because it's sum, yeah? you plus P2 multiplied by R2 plus P3 multiplied by R3. Yeah? So because N is 3 here, there are only 3 states. Yeah? And therefore, there will be only 3. Yeah? 3 products that you sum. Yeah? This is called a product. This is summing 2 products. Yeah? Summing 3 products. Okay, there are 3 products here. Yeah? When you multiply 2 elements, then it's called a product. Then you add yeah, 2 elements, it's called a sum. Yeah? So you need to understand the difference. All right. So for stop C, so the probability of the first possibility is 0 0.3. This is a boom, yeah? 30% chance that there will be a boom. If there is a boom, then stop C will give you a return of 15%. So 0 0.3 multiplied by 15 plus 0 0.5, this is the probability that uh, normal yeah, growth in the economy. If there is normal growth, then the return for stock C will be 10%. This is from the table, yeah, 10%. Then plus the last possibility will be a recession, yeah. There is a 20% chance, 0 0.2, 20%, multiplied by 2% return if there is a recession. So you add all these three products, you get 9.9%, yeah. So this is the expected return of stock C for next year. Okay, and this does not depend on the possibility. Yeah? Of course, it depends on the possibility, but it's not condition. Yeah? The condition is not the possibility. Okay, so this is the expected return for the year. Yeah? Now, this expected return is not the same as the possible return. The possible return here for uh, a boom is 15%. If it's normal growth, it's 10%. Yeah? But when it's recession, it's 2%. So these are the possible, three possible returns. But the expected return is none of these, yeah? not the same as any of these three. Yeah? But it's close to this yeah? because it is uh, closer to the normal. Yeah? This is uh, to be expected. Yeah? This is to be expected. Okay, so this is how you compute. Yeah? So this, it means that if you can, what, is, what does this 9.9% actually mean? Yeah? It means that if the investor can invest in stock C, yeah? again and again, yeah, many times over, okay, then uh, the investor will expect to get a return of 9.9% from investing in stock C. Okay, so that's the implication. Yeah? So it's an, uh, a measure, an index of return for stock C. Okay, now you can do the same for stock T. Yeah? This is the expected return for stock T. Now, this is 0 0.3, same, because that's the possibility, uh, the probability of the first possibility, okay, which is a boom, yeah. If there's a boom, then stop T will give you a return of 25%, okay, plus uh, 0 0.5, this is when the economy is growing normally, 
0 0.5 will be 50% chance. Yeah? So 0 0.5 multiplied by, if there's normal growth, stock T will give you a return of 20%. Okay, plus if there is a depression, a recession, sorry, 0 0.2 uh, uh, probability or 20% probability multiplied by 1% return. Yeah? If there's a recession, there'll be a 1% return for stock T. So when you sum all the three okay, products, you get 17.7%. Yeah. Now you can see that this 17.7% is lower than this and lower than this, but it's much higher than this. Yeah? But it's not the same as any of the three yeah, possible returns. Okay, that is what we mean by the expected return need not be the same as the possible returns. Yeah. Okay, likewise here, yeah, this 9.9% is none of these three. Yeah? Okay, but it's somewhere in between. Yeah? Alright. Now you can note this, yeah, this expected return cannot be higher than the highest possible return and cannot be lower than the lowest possible return. Okay, this must be in between 15% and 2%. Likewise, 17.7 cannot be higher than 25% and cannot be lower than 1%. Okay? Because it's actually a weighted average, yeah? it's based on probability, right? So it cannot be higher than this or lower than this. Okay, so these are some of the uh, characteristics of the expected return. Yeah? So again, what does this expected return mean? If the investor can invest in stock T yeah? uh, several times over, not only for one year, but many, many times in a year, okay? that is actually a hypothetical yeah? situation. situation yeah? Okay. But we can understand that, yeah? even though we cannot do it, okay, but we can understand, yeah? Okay, so it means that if you invest uh, in stock T many times over, okay, then your expected return will be about 17.7%. Now, uh, ignoring all other factors, yeah, if you just look at the return, which stock has higher expected return? Of course, stock T, yeah, has higher expected return. Okay, but is stock T better than stock C? Okay, so this we have to consider further. And yeah? based on expected return, stock T has higher expected return okay, than stock C. Okay, that's uh, what we can conclude for the moment. Yeah? Alright, now we come to the second aspect, yeah? which is variance. Okay, you can't see it here. Yeah? Variance and standard deviation. Okay, just now we looked at expected return. Now we look at variance and standard deviation. Yeah? Now, variance and standard deviation uh, measure the volatility of returns. Yeah? What do you mean by volatility? Volatility also means variability of returns. That means how the returns fluctuate. Yeah? The fluctuation or the change in the return. So this is actually a measure of risk. Okay, remember return, we have expected return. A measure of return will be expected return. Then the measure of risk, yeah, we can use volatility of return, yeah, or variance or standard deviation. There are two measures here. One is variance, the other is standard deviation. Both, yeah, uh, can be used to measure volatility of return or variability of return, or the fluctuating, yeah, nature of the return. The return that is more fluctuating has more risk, yeah, basically, yeah, or Returns that have greater volatility or greater variability will have greater risk. All right, yeah? Now, how do you compute the variance and standard deviation of a particular asset? Okay, so here we use unequal probabilities for the entire range of possibilities. Here we use the same thing, okay, like we did for expected return. Now, this is the uh, uh, formula yeah, for variance, which is basically weighted average of squared deviation okay yeah so what do we mean here this is the variance this is sigma yeah? this symbol this greek symbol is called sigma when you have a square here this is refers to vari uh, variance variance of return yeah uh, variance can be applied to any yeah? uh, series of data but here we refer to return yeah? when we say variance we mean variance of returns all right, then we have, this is summation. We have seen this before, okay, in the previous formula. Now, this i is the possibility, okay, from 1 to n. There are n possibilities or n states or 
and uh, what do you call uh, scenarios. Yeah. Right now, when we look at this, yeah, we have R i. This is the possible return i. Okay, given uh, possibility i minus the expected return. Yeah, this expected return we have computed using the previous formula, right? So R i minus the expected return. You square this. Okay, this is called the deviation of return. So you square the deviation, and yeah? that's why it's called squared deviation. This is called the deviation R min R i minus R hat. Yeah is the deviation of return. When you square this, then it becomes squared deviation. Then you multiply with the probability. That's why it's called weighted average. Yeah? You multiply with probability, then it becomes weighted average of squared deviation. Yeah? That is the variance. All right, let's look at the formula. Yeah? This is the formula. I prefer using this. Sigma squared is variance. Summation from i equals to 1 to n, which is the same. Now I Changes slightly, yeah, uh, from the formula given. It's just the order, yeah. I take R i, the return, yeah, possible return, uh, for the particular stock, yeah, given condition i or given state i minus the expected return. This is the deviation. You square that first, okay. It's called the squared deviation. Then you multiply with the probability, yeah. In the formula, you had pi first multiplied by this, yeah? but here I use this first multiplied by the probability. Yeah? Alright, so when you expand this, this is the summation. When you want to remove the summation, then this is one. There are three possibilities, and this is for the example just now. There are only three states, therefore, uh, i ranges from 1 to 3. Yeah? So 1, 2, and 3. There are three. Uh, elements here, yeah? three components if you like, three components. Alright, so therefore for stock C, the variance of stock C is 15%, the possible return under boom, minus the expected return 9.9%. Where did you get this? This is from the previous example, yeah? previous uh, calculation. Yeah? We found that the expected return for stock C is 9.9%. Yeah? Therefore, it's 15 minus 9.9% square. The convention is, yeah, you can use uh, the return in percentage, 15%, yeah, yeah, but don't round off, yeah, because when you round off, then the uh, possibility of mistake is very high, yeah, rounding off error is very high. So you don't round off, yeah, you take 15% minus 9.9, .9, yeah, you can ignore the percentage here, but remember that it is percentage, okay. In your calculator, you don't have to uh, you don't have to put in percentage. You just put 15 minus 9.9. .9. You square that, multiply with 0 0.3. This is the probability. Yeah? Probability, you can put this in decimal. Yeah? That's the convention. Yeah? Then plus the second possible return, yeah? which is uh, under normal economic growth, is 10% for stock C. Minus 9.9%, the expected return. You square that, then you multiply with the probability of normal growth, yeah, which is 0 0.5. Then finally, you plus the possible return when there is a recession in the economy, 2% for stock C, minus 9.9% expected return for stock C. You square that, you multiply with 0 0.2, the probability of recession. Yeah. Then you sum all three. Yeah, you sum the three, you get 20.29. Note this yeah, here, yeah. You can ignore the percentage, then you do the calculation, you compute in your or you key in to your calculator. But when you get 20.29, it is actually percentage square, yeah, not percentage. Yeah? Don't make the mistake of putting that as percentage. It is actually percentage square. Why? Because this is percentage, okay, 15% minus 9.9% will be in percentage, in percent, yeah. When you square that, it becomes percentage square. Remember, percentage is 1 over 100, okay. So, when you square that, it becomes 1 over one, uh, 10,000, yeah. Becomes, there will be four zeros, yeah, 10,000. So, this is 20.29 over 10,000, yeah, know that, yeah. You can write that that way, 20.29 over 10,000 or 20.29 percentage square. Now, you need to compute the standard deviation. Standard deviation is simply the 
uh, square root of the variance. Yeah? Therefore, square root of 20.29% will be 4.